praise as you take your seats and just speak that into the atmosphere one more time. Say, I refuse to lay here and die. Amen. Many of us, when we begin to experience so much destruction and so much disappointment and so many setbacks, we begin to accept that as a normal reality for our lives. We begin to think that negativity and everything going in the opposite direction of what we expected and everything unraveling at the seams, it begins to become so familiar that we embrace that as our lot in life. Um, we lose our hope, we lose our expectation. We stop anticipating uh, anything good happening to us because we become so accustomed to everything negative happening. Um, there are many forms of death. Death is not always physical. And a lot of times it's because when we begin to experience uh, physical death, the death of a loved one, the death of someone that we care dearly about, it begins to cause us to be so uh, disturbed and so um, hurt that um, it affects us to the point where we sit deep into um, a level of depression because we have experienced a loss of someone. And it drains us of our ability to even have the energy and the motivation to want to move on beyond this. Many of us, when we're sitting in here and we're dealing with excessive grief, we're grieving over the loss of somebody. We're grieving over the loss of someone that we love. And many of us, we're sitting here in the back of our minds, we are, we are, we're wondering why did God allow this to happen to me? Why, if God loves me, how would he allow something so painful to happen to me? Why did this come into my life? And so because we begin, begin to get so familiar with death, we begin to embrace that. Things begin to die all around us. Amen. It is not just the physical death. Sometimes it's the death of our hopes, our dreams our expectations, our ambitions, if we set out to accomplish something and it doesn't happen within the time period or if it, it appears that we have failed, that we, we attempted to open a business, we attempted to try to do something that we feel that God placed in our heart to accomplish and when we're not able to accomplish that, uh, we see the very thing that we uh, was was hoping for, the very thing that we were striving after, when we have to sit there and watch it die, when we have to sit there and watch it dry up in our face, it begins to uh, dry up our faith and our expectation for anything else to ever happen or anything else to manifest itself. And so you need to understand that God is doing something new in your life. Glory to God that some of you here today, God brought you here for the specific purpose to break the spirit of death off of your life. And when I'm talking about death, I don't want you to limit death to the physical uh, aspect or someone dying physically. Many of you in here, your, your motivation has died, your, your drive has died, your ambition has dried. Many of us, we're sitting in here, we have watched marriages die. We have watched relationships that we thought that was, this was going to be the one where I can experience happiness. I finally found a man that would love me. I finally found a woman that could appreciate me, but you have I have to sit back and watch that relationship die. And now you have, glory to God, pretty much given up on the expectation of life. But look at somebody and tell them the devil is a lie. You have to get to the point where you understand that the word of God is preeminent over everything else in your life. That the word of God is solid. And today God brought you here just to tell you that you will live and not die. Many of the times, because death becomes so familiar, death becomes so common around us, we embrace it as our own. But you're going to have to get in, get back in the mindset that I want to live. You're going to have to make a decision that I will not allow one incident or these different tragedies that have somehow came into my life to begin to categorize my entire life. I can recover from this. I can get up from this. I can move forward. There is a life that God has for me. As a matter of fact, God knew me before I was even here. And if God knew me 
before I was even here, then God has a plan for my life. God has something beyond where I am now. If you can just get beyond this moment, you can, you just have to understand that God has something great for you. That God has something beyond your imagination and beyond your ability to articulate it and explain it. For the Bible says, I have not seen. Stop right there. That's an indicator that there are some things that I have yet to see in my life. And that's enough motivation itself to make me want to get up and get going because something is getting ready to happen and I got to stay here. I got to stick around because I want to see what God is about to do next. Look at the neighbor say, I got to stick around because I know God is about to do something that's going to absolutely blow my mind. And if you don't understand that the Bible says in Psalms 118, glory to God, in verse 17 it says, I shall not die. You got to begin to embrace that word for your life. The word shall there guarantees. The word shall there is a form of declaration. It is a public announcement that regardless of how much death I have encountered, I will live. You got to get a, a fight within your spirit that shake off, glory to God, every spirit of death and destruction, everything that's trying to diminish you and begin to say, I shall live. Look at somebody and say, God brought you here today for you to embrace life for peace. You have to get to the point that you refuse to lay here and die. Yeah, it's been rough. Yeah, I have my share of heartache and pain. But I refuse to lay here and die. I refuse to lay here and watch my dreams die. I refuse to lay here and watch my hopes die. I refuse to lay here and watch my family die. I refuse to lay here and embrace that because God has given me life. Somebody shout life, shout life. God told me to tell you, you got too much life to live to embrace death as a lifestyle. You got too much life to live to embrace emotional death with this, which is depression. Depression is nothing more than emotional death. And some of you, glory to God, you're not physically dead, but you're emotionally dead. Because the last thing you experience, it desensitizes you emotionally. Now you're afraid to feel. Now you're afraid to embrace anybody. Now you're afraid to trust. But you are emotionally dead. And God said, I'm coming to bring you life again. I come to announce to you that you will love again. That you will trust again. You will live again. You will have life and glory to God. Tell your neighbor, you will get past this. You're going to get past this. You have to refuse to lay here and die. You have to make our feel a preach working on it. You have to decide that you want to live. You got to decide that my future is going to be better than what I'm going through now. My future alone is enough to get me motivated. The expectation of a better life is enough to make me motivated. Because I just want to see what God is going to do. You have to understand that what you have to experience is nothing compared to what you're getting ready to experience. Look at the man, you say, God is about to do something that is absolutely going to blow your mind. And I know it may be difficult, it may be complicated for you to embrace what I'm saying because of what you've been going through. But the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. If God decrees a thing, it shall come to pass. Look at somebody say, you will live. Come on, have a seat, have a seat. What the enemy wants is to so sabotage you and so suck the life out of you and so drain you of your vitality and your expectation and your motivation, motivation that you embrace death as something normal. When something dies, that means that it ceases to exist, that it is no longer here, it is no longer moving, it no longer has a pulse. And some of you, I come to tell you, man of God, I come to tell you, woman of God, the things that God is about to resurrect because it is dead, but that is the power of God. God has the power to resurrect anything that is dead. If it was ordained by God to live, I hear the Spirit of God say, I'm about to breathe on the dead. I'm about to resuscitate everything that's going to come to you try to bury. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hear glory to God. This is your season for a Lazarus experience. They already buried you. They already had the funeral. They already put you away. But God said, I'm getting ready to roll the spirit.